I thought I'd start by talking a little bit about how the book came to be. Um, after the disastrous election, um, uh, 10 or so lefty artists from around the country got together and started a project called Plaster the Walls. We were, um, we were all making posters of our own designs and they were getting put up in cities all over the country. It was a very exciting project, but after about uh, a year, I had a stack of over a hundred paintings that seemed like they might be a body of work. Um, I, I know what to do when I have a body of work. I go to Brad and ask him, <laughs> how can I make this into something that has glue? So I brought uh, this stack of paintings over to Brad's dining room and we spread them out on the table, on the floor, on the counters. And eventually um, Brad had a few requests for more paintings. And then he finally um, put the story to it and gave it the compassion and the heart that it now has. Hope that's true. So uh, as is usually the case with artistic events, this is all Hank's fault, as you can see. Uh, you, you can imagine that being presented with 100 paintings would be overwhelming. Somehow, Hank and I have done this collaboration several times. Sometimes I've written poems to his already existing paintings. Sometimes I've written stories and he's painted from my stories. So we've done this a long time. We've done it artistically. We've done it politically. We've made giant protest puppets for the uh, anti-Iraqi war effort. Oh, remember those days? Um, anyway, uh, this book, when he threw down the 70 sheets and we were all over the kitchen, it just immediately became sort of sensible and, and I could make, I could see groupings that went together. And unlike when I try to create stories just from nothing, the story almost immediately presented itself from the groupings. And really the way, if in case you haven't seen the book yet, um, you know, this is, you'll see the art coming up here in a moment. This is a response, our response to the fever dream of living in Trump world. And as Hank said, it might, we might have feared that it had gotten dated. I think if anything, it's more germane and sort of uncanny how prescient many of Hank's paintings were way back in 2017, 2018. I'll, I'll interrupt you for a minute to ask you if you remember um, a couple of posters that didn't make it into the book. Uh, speaking of prescient, uh, one was a, a frantic looking adolescent um, asking the question uh, or making the statement, I didn't vote for the apocalypse. And another one with, oh, the, no. with the same character. Um, said, I didn't vote for the plague. Uh, oh, obviously, way pre COVID. Um, so, we've been collaborating like this for a long time. It, there's often a great easefulness to it, almost an uncanny easefulness. Um, what came out of my mind, which I didn't know exactly what it was at the time, was the story of this elderly artist, may or may not be Hank dealing with the advent of these new circumstances around us, the, the resurgence of racism, the resurgence of authoritarianism, the resurgence of callousness, the resurgence of cruelty, the resurgence of absolute oblivion for anything seemingly like the public good. Um, I think the, the book itself, the words, the pic but especially the pictures give voice to uh, disgust, disillusionment, despair, hope, exhilaration, all these various emotions that I think, uh, if it, to judge from the people I've talked to, we've all felt during this time. So the book's been helpful to us in coping with this. It's been a great uh, thing for us to do together. We were just talking when we were still muted earlier about what do we do next? Uh, so that's fun. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, that is fun. we've passed along, we hope we've passed along a sense of indirectly, because the book's not about analysis, it's more about feeling and being inside the experience of living in the fever dream. So we hope our effort has helped you cope too. An elder hides in his studio, 
chap the first chapter. For a while there, life just meanders along for the old artist in a docile way, slightly inspired, slightly sluggish, when all of a sudden the fates grab him by the chin and wrench his head to the right and scream, look at this, things have come to a head. He suffocates under <laughs> feelings battling with each other. His routine is the same every morning. Reading through the news for three, from three different alternative presses, that starts his, off his day every day with a good punch to the gut. Then he does the only thing that might bring him some measure of comfort and solidity. He paints, following on a lifetime of painting, searching for answers to questions not yet formed. In a few days, the artist makes a little protest sign that seems so wonderfully, wonderfully subtle. The march he's setting out on is four miles long. He can't go more than three blocks without his knees feeling the way they do. I wanted to point out um, something that many of you know so well, and that is that back in the 80s, the world of demonstrations and protests were actually street theater. They were bold attempts at shaming politicians. Things like pouring pig's blood on a senator's door kind of thing. Now it has become a brutal civil war with cops uncontrolled. A totally different story. Now I will read from um, the chapter called Net Worth. The artist's father knew about money. He was a conservative, a CPA, and a Catholic, and he said, follow the money. The artist, an old-fashioned radical, reads up on the money trail, the wanton influence peddling, the way a few elites brazenly tilt the playing field in their favor. It's been going on forever. Even Eisenhower warned about it. Back then, his dad had serious post-depression advice for his son. Eating out is a foolish waste of money. Had he lived long enough, his father would certainly be disgusted with today's conservatives. This is one of my favorite slides. Charles Koch, dare we pick on him again, bonds with a skinhead. This weird, funny thing of billionaires concocting a populist political movement. Of people, of people and for people for whom they have nothing but disdain and contempt, except as tools for the ransacking of the economy and any semblance of democracy. The erosion of the political system has been no accident. Since Goldwater and before, there has been a systematic, intentional, well-funded effort to undermine basic democratic freedoms and institutions. Some more of our billionaire friends. Well, what I find myself wondering about here is when you, because all the paintings preceded the words and the story. So when you start a painting, the paintings, I guess, specifically in this book, like what's the, what's the impetus? What's the road in? Is it a dream? Is, is it a phrase? Is it, a, you know, just your mind wandering? Uh, what's, what's, the, what's the impetus for so many of these? When I, when I think about the times that I am involved in a project, uh, it's, it's about focusing the mind and it's automatic and it's kind of imaginary in that uh, the question is constantly uh, on the tip of my tongue how does this uh, this thing that i'm experiencing this dream this um artist work by someone else this music that i just heard <clears throat> this this uh photo from 1945 how does that pertain to the project that i'm working on that is really about blending experiences news dreams and other people's creative work into um, into something that might might pertain, but it requires that I um, embrace absurdity, that I um, juxtapose unrelated things, that I um, take take on metaphor and similes um, as my own. 
So I think the richness that's born out of that is what makes it so easy for me to come to it than with words, because it's all just, it's packed in there so tightly. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's what visual artists are hoping, is that they have a, a language that is, um, that is not everybody's um, spoken language. Right. Um, so I, something I didn't know about your art in this project until well into the postering project was your technique. Like you didn't paint most of these things. You didn't draw these with a pen and pencil and then ink them in. Could you tell everybody about that? Yeah, I think of it as the same kind of of work that I'm doing um, sort of mentally or meditatively. And that is, I try and find a way, um, I, I try and find a medium that provides easy changes like acrylic paint on paper. I try to avoid precision and preciousness. I, um, I say yes to awkwardness. Um, I draw with a mouse sometimes, which is pretty awkward on, on the screen. Um, occasionally I'll, I'll draw upside down or left-handed. And this is all in this process of loosening the mind and the body to make some magic connections that, uh, that I'm not aware of that are not linear. And a uh, mm -hmm. little question for me is, um, um, for you, is it, how did you come up with this story? Well, as I said, it sort of sprung upon me from the pictures. We, I remember we began putting them in lots and they, they seemed to belong together. And then I was imagining their crea creation. And I, as I said, said just a moment ago, there was so much packed into each painting for me because of the absurdity, because of the willingness to say yes to so many elements. I think he was just pregnant there. Also, I didn't really have to make it up as it were. The cult. The old artist sits puzzling, stuck, unable to paint. A despondency not unfamiliar these days was born aflame this morning. The artist didn't see this moment coming. Inconceivable, yet as it turns out, inevitable. So many people dispossessed. So many left behind, left befuddled, and then enraged as the new economy bellowed in the distance. He wants to paint these fellow citizens with compassion, full of the humanity they doubtless possess. He tries, he paints, his wrist loosens, heart expands. I, I want to say something about this painting. Okay. The, um, it's, it's uh, bizarre how, and, and you've mentioned this, Brad, already, um, the marriage of two kinds of Trump supporters couldn't be more bizarre. One group is blindly adding to their bottomless wealth, and the other group, this group, is barely surviving, but falling for the fear and lies. Empires collapse and die. Thousands of books tell the tale. But this is... But is this what it feels like, the artist muses? Fools in charge, gun runners control the jail, safe crackers run the treasury, idiocy and hypocrisy on a grand and laughable scale. Well-connected populists pandering and lying to the dispossessed. He painted a few of these bastards. By some fluke, these closed-minded sourpusses unfamiliar with justice or compassion. Oh, this is, this is just a comment of mine, well, not, not from the book. End up with power over people's lives. Jeff Sessions and Mitch McConnell, despite their proper uniforms, clean shaves, and weekly haircuts, look clownish and asked to be drawn. I am hopeful. You're here. We're here. We're talking. I was on a phone call yesterday with a uh, bunch of young people who are doing get out very innovative get out the vote stuff um, very innovative election protection stuff very energetic people um, who, are, who aren't just flying by the seat of their pants they're well resourced they're uh, on fire to make sure that Trump does not get reelected 
So, you know, I, I'm hopeful. I joke about myself that I'm a pessimist who doesn't know how to give up, but when I'm in the presence of people like I was yesterday, I become hopeful. And we're here talking together tonight, and I, that brings me a certain sense of hopefulness, even though maybe you're all fellow travelers anyway. You know, call your friends in Ohio and Florida and Wisconsin, the middle of the road Republicans who might, who might vote for, who might vote for uh, uh, Trump and ask them just, if they don't want to vote for, for uh, Biden, to maybe just sit it out this year. Um, and I think uh, fellow travelers need, need nurturing. Um, that's what I was that's, trying that's to say. pretty obvious. And I've uh, got this wonderful statement here, is there uh, more hope? But I do, I do uh, think that uh, a hopeful sequel would really be a hoot. What do you think, partner? Yeah, you, you're painting my right. <laughs>